One of the most important tests when diagnosing a fuel pump circuit are the electrical tests. Electrical issues can cause fuel delivery problems and create the wrong impression that the fuel pump is bad when it isn't. Testing the power and ground circuits to the fuel pump are critical to an accurate diagnosis. When electrical connections fail, voltage to the fuel pump is reduced and the fuel pump doesn't run efficiently. This produces low pressure and possibly noise accompanied by poor performance and even premature fuel pump failure. One of the best ways to check a fuel pump circuit is with a voltage drop test. Voltage drop test checks for voltage lost along a wire, through a connection, through a resistance, or any high resistance problem in a circuit. All we need to do this voltage drop test is a digital volt ohm meter. So what is voltage drop? By definition, a voltage drop is the loss of voltage caused by the flow of current through a resistance. Any increase in resistance in the circuit will create an increase in voltage drop. When checking for voltage drop, one of the most important things that has to happen is the fuel pump must be running. A common mistake when doing voltage drop tests is that we don't have the fuel pump running and the reading then would be inaccurate. So we're going to have the fuel pump running. What we're looking for, typical voltage drops on both the power and ground circuit can exceed 0.5 or half a volt. So let's take a look on how to actually do a voltage drop test on the fuel pump power circuit on the vehicle. Let's take a look to see how to actually do a voltage drop test on the fuel pump circuit on a live car. Now the first thing we need to do is obviously have our digital volt ohm meter leads, which we'll use in a minute. I'm going to need to use some jumper leads that'll go all the way back to the fuel pump. So I have some long jumper leads here, which are connected to the terminals on the fuel pump, and they're going to allow me to get at the fuel pump while I'm right under the hood next to the battery. Now we do our voltage drop test on the positive side, is that we're going to take our digital volt ohm meter leads and we're going to take the red lead of our digital volt ohm meter and we're going to put it on the positive side of the battery. We're going to switch our voltmeter on and then we're going to take our black lead and we're going to connect it to the red jumper wire. Remember that this is connected to the power terminal of the fuel pump. So essentially I'm going from the positive battery post with one voltmeter lead and with the other voltmeter lead I'm going right into the power wire at the fuel pump. Now we won't get any voltage drop reading until we get current flow through the fuel pump. So it is very important that we get current flow through the fuel pump in order to get a voltage drop, meaning the pump has to be running. So what we're going to do is we're going to have someone turn the key on now and that will run the pump for two seconds. An alternative to this would be to pull the fuel pump relay out, jumpers terminal 30 to 87, typically on a fuel pump relay, and that will get the fuel pump to run all the time. So let's turn the key on and see what our voltage drop is on the positive side. Our voltage drop on the positive side of this car is 0.2 volts. Remember our maximum voltage is 0.5, so this car has a good positive power circuit to the fuel pump. So everything from the battery all the way back to the fuel pump electrically is in great shape. Now what's nice about this test is it works on all vehicles. Now to do the ground side it's just as easy but we're going to hook up our leads a little differently. First thing we're going to do is this time we're going to connect the negative lead of my digital volt ohm meter to the negative battery post. Then I'm going to take the positive lead of my digital volt ohm meter, and this time I'm going to connect it to a jumper wire that's connected to the ground terminal at the fuel pump. So I've got this red lead of my digital volt ohm meter, and I'm going to connect it to this black wire. Now a couple of notes on the jumper wire while we're here. You prefer to have a straight wire that goes all the way back, because we don't want to have any problem with the wire itself, meaning a spiral or coiled wire may seem handy, but they often have a lot of resistance built into them. So a straight wire is preferable if you have to run a long distance, um, from in this case, from the fuel pump up to the battery. Now, once again, we need current flow through the circuit, so we're going to have someone turn the key on, which will allow the fuel pump to run, and we're going to take a look at what our ground side is. When we turn the key on, what we get is a fluctuation between 0.2 and 0.3 volts. Remember, our maximum allowable voltage drop on the ground side 
the same as the power side, is a maximum of 0.5 or a half a volt. So we have a perfectly fine ground circuit here. So what we've essentially done is we check both the power and the ground side, and we've now determined we have great electrical integrity from the battery all the way back to the fuel pump. So now we can continue with our fuel pump diagnosis, because electrically we're okay.